All right, let's do this. Take one, pros and cons to living in specifically Bowling Green. Let's do it. What's going on guys? My name is Val Hardesty. I'm a local realtor here in the central Kentucky area um, between Elizabethtown down to Bowling Green, all the way down I-65, which is only a one hour difference. But welcome to our channel, Central Kentucky Living. And if you are looking for a realtor in this area to help you out, please feel free to contact us. Our information is in the link below. All right, I'm gonna try to keep this real today and also keep it real short because <laughs> I have a lot to do today. Today is the first day in seven whole days that the sun actually has appeared in the sky this big orange ball that we haven't seen in days and days and days and that is right off the bat number one con to living in kentucky in general is the winter weather is the crappiest most depressing weather you'll probably ever live through and i'm here to tell you that if you have babies and toddlers maybe they can help bring you some joy throughout your day but if you live in a house full of teenagers Hold on to your hats, it's gonna be a long winter. <laughs> yep, and if you haven't figured it out, I'm here to tell you the truth about living in this area. <laughs> I've lived in this area for over 20 years. We do love it, Kentucky is our home, but I will be real with you about some things that you may not like here. But we've got a lot of pros to talk about today too, so let's get to it. The number one pro to living in Bowling Green, specifically, South Central Kentucky, is location. We've talked about this in many of our videos, so I'm just not going to cover much of it, but we live in a very centralized area to lots of places to visit and lots of things to go do, except for the beach, but you can get there in 8 to 10 hours in the car instead of an airplane, and it'll be okay. Uh, the most popular places to go if you lived in the Bowling Green area, if you just want to get out of town and get to like a bigger city and, and have, you know, a more exciting um night out on the town is going to be, of course, Nashville. There's tons to do there. Of course, you're going to do your research in Nashville if you've never been. But if you have, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and it's only a one-hour drive. Also, if you're into boating and you like to get out on the lake, Barren River Lake is really close, probably a 20-minute drive. You can go camping there. You can rent cabins, fishing, boating. There's a golf course. Plenty to do over there near Barren River. Another pro to living in this area is you are on central time. In my opinion, central time is awesome because if you're an early riser and you need to like get to work online or whatever it is you're doing and you need to get a hold of someone on Eastern time and it's only eight o'clock here, it's already nine o'clock there and everything's open and they're ready to do business and rock and roll. The downside to it is daylight savings in the fall when we fall back and it gets dark, you know, typically for everyone else at 5.30. Well, we are literally on the Eastern Central Time split. And so like an hour north in Elizabethtown, it'll get dark at 5.30, but here in Bowling Green, it's 4.30. And it, it's miserable and I'm not gonna lie. Like it, it, it gets better into January, of course, when we start, you know, the earth starts turning in different directions. <laughs> but getting through November and December, um, it, it gets dark at 4.30, 4.45, and your day is just over. Unless you're okay with getting out in the dark and doing what you need to do, it's just over. Another pro to living in Bowling Green is you are very close to I-65. <laughs> Actually, that might be a con. Um, I-65 can be a little bit nutty if you need to commute to work. I-65 between Bowling Green and Elizabethtown is actually really pleasant. It's not a bad drive. It's pretty and the traffic isn't horrible. Except currently, right now with the Ford plant coming in around the Glendale area, it's a little bit congested with the construction, but it's not awful. Um, and we're really grateful for that because that's another pro I'm going to talk about, which is tons of jobs coming in. But from Bowling Green to E-Town, it's not that bad. From Bowling Green to Nashville, it's a little rough and you gotta use your, your patience skills. <laughs> As opposed to like if you lived in E-Town, Elizabethtown, and you had to commute to Louisville, that drive is not as pleasant, I'm gonna be honest. It's heavy traffic and sometimes that area of I-65, if something goes wrong or a semi turns over or there's a bad accident, um, it really can hold up things for hours and hours. It, it, and what I'm saying is it can do that, obviously, in the southern parts of I-65, too, but 
it tends to happen more up there for some reason. So um, just a lot of interchanges, I guess. I don't know, but I feel like the southern part of that I-65 drive is a lot more pleasant. Okay, one of my favorite and biggest pros to living in Bowling Green is there is simply more to do. If you're looking for a well-rounded, fuller, little more exciting quality of life, uh, and by that I mean like just things to do, uh, you're active in the community, or you like going out to eat a couple nights a week or once a week, or you like to feel like you have things to go do, mom and pop shops, good restaurants, decent shopping, Bowling Green's the third largest city in Kentucky after Louisville and Lexington with a population of 75,000 people, which is still growing. Um, there's plenty to do here. It's refreshing when you come from a smaller town where sometimes you just feel kind of bored and kind of stale. Now you do have the ability to live in a more rural setting and still be close to town. And that's true of, you know, any larger area, whether it's Owensboro, Louisville, Lexington, Elizabethtown, or Bowling Green. Um, but you do have the options to be right in town with a lot more things to do. Yes, there are a lot more um, chain restaurants to choose from, but there's also a lot more local places to choose from. And not just restaurants, but grocery stores, boutiques, uh, international grocery stores, and things like Beatbox, which is a... This is not a sponsored video in any way, but I've discovered Beatbox and I really love it because you can get really good, healthy, like takeout meals and boxes. Now they do serve you there. They have dine-in as well. Um, they have great breakfasts and lunches, little like, you know, gluten-free or vegan snacks. Not always, they serve meat too. So you can find like a taco bowl. They have chicken salad you can take home, little like bento box type meals and cold pressed juices, lots of things on the shelf as far as like gluten-free cookies and chips, and it's actually really good. Speaking of beatbox, I got myself a lemonade. And this isn't any ordinary lemonade. This is rosemary lemonade, and it's good too. So swing in there, get you some juices. They've got all kinds of flavors. Ooh, their apple one's really good too, so. Thank you, beatbox. So where I was going with all that was, um, it seems that here in Bowling Green, locals and small businesses seem to do really well, as opposed to I mean, I don't want to sound negative, um, but in a in a smaller town like Elizabethtown, it just seems, listen, I've lived there 20 years, I've seen it happen. Small local businesses struggle, and it's it's sad and unfortunate. If you, if you watched my um, Things to Do in Elizabethtown video where I talked about the boutiques and the downtown shopping, that's so much fun, and it really is a nice place to go, and downtown has really been thriving and doing so much better over the last, I wanna say, decade but sometimes the businesses still seem to come and go. And even in that video, um, we just went back recently to visit E-Town and had dinner at one of the newer restaurants, but learned, come to find out, like three of those boutiques were closed. So those are gone and it, it just seems to be a pattern. And it's unfortunate and I don't know really why. There was another really awesome donut place that opened up there um, in the last year. And they just literally put out a uh, Facebook post letting everyone know that they're not going to be able to stay open and it, it's so sad But I don't understand why it happens in a town like E-Town, but um, it doesn't seem to be the case here in Bowling Green I know that that's not always the case. I mean businesses open and close for all kinds of reasons But I'm just saying that here in Bowling Green there seems to be a lot more Locals that are staying alive on a more consistent basis some of the really good places to eat if you're wondering are a really nice restaurant, probably a special occasion restaurant called Hickory and Oak. Um, the pub by Novo is really popular, a little more casual, laid back atmosphere. And local taco is awesome. They've got great little margaritas. And I'm telling you, they use the good tequila too. Cheap little tacos. And by cheap, I mean, you can pick and choose off their menu and get different flavors of tacos for like $4 each, maybe five. BG Shakery is another one. You can get these really beautiful Instagrammable milkshakes. <laughs> There's tons, just Google them. You'll find them all. And also Bowling Green has a decent shopping mall because I know malls all over across America, some of them in smaller towns are struggling. Um, this one's not, it's alive and well. It's got what you need. I wanna say, I don't know how many stores. I might have to Google it and put it right here, but maybe I wanna say 65 to 100. I could be wrong. <laughs> we'll see if I'm right when I put it in the text. But it's clean, it's nice, it's got everything for all ages. To me, that's a good indication that it's still 
a thriving area. The next pro is that Bowling Green has a healthy population of friendly people. This is a southern Kentucky town and you will find that people here are welcoming and friendly. You will get a wave or a smile, eye contact. That's all very important. I've talked about it in other videos. A healthy mix of people that live here. So you will really feel like you fit right in because you can just be who you are because everyone here is from everywhere and everyone here is just who they are and it works and it feels good. I don't know what else to say about it. It's a huge pro for me. And the next pro is that Bowling Green stays alive with lots of activity. So during basically year round, you're gonna find something to do um, in the community, whether it's a festival or in the um, spring through summer, Bowling Green offers down at Circus Square Park. Um, there's like a taco truck night where there's live music, things going on all the time, weekly. Christmas parades, uh, lighting of the trees downtown at Fountain Square, all kinds of things going on. There's an ice skating rink down there currently. Unfortunately, I will go ahead and throw this con in there. I mean, if you're wondering about crime statistics and homeless population and that kind of thing, that is up to you uh, to do that kind of research and decide for yourself, you know, what you think about it. Um, unfortunately, in our country, it's everywhere. In our world, it's everywhere. And this particular year, our Christmas parade got postponed because of a threat. You know, so that message went out to everyone's phones and unfortunately the parade was canceled that morning and rightfully so. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. It, it happens everywhere. Um, they did end up pulling it off a week later, which was good, and the kids got to enjoy it. But So, I mean, is it a con? Well, yeah, but it's a con everywhere. I don't know what else to say about it. Jarrett and I have talked about this a lot, and that is that this area is growing very rapidly, and there's a ton of jobs coming into this area, and a ton of jobs that have already been here for a long time, like places like Fruit of the Loom, WKU, Western Kentucky University, lots of distribution centers, battery plants, GM, automotive jobs, and here in a city like this, gig work is pretty easy to come by. So what I mean by that is like food delivery, if you're delivering groceries or like DoorDash or something like that, um, in this area, it's pretty easy to do because you've got several areas of town that are populated with restaurants and those types of things. And in these areas, it's full of neighborhoods and apartment complexes. So getting around to the different parts of town is easy for this kind of work because if you're picking up a delivery and you're going three miles, well, you're going to end up in another area where you can pick up another delivery and keep moving is what I'm saying. So it works in a town like this where that kind of work seems to be a very easy way to make a few extra bucks on the side. Since Jarrett's not with me today, I'll go ahead and tell you his number one pro that he had me write down to deliver to you today, and that is um, the car scene in Bowling Green. Obviously, you probably already know the Corvette Museum is here, the Corvette plant is here, where all the Corvettes in the world are manufactured. It's really cool, and they've just recently opened up the plant tours again, so you can actually see how they build the Corvettes. You can't video it, but you can go watch. There's also a raceway called NCM. You can drive to the speed of your heart's desire. <laughs> there's a drag strip and raceway up at Beach Bend Park. So there's lots of uh, car shows and things going on here. Locals, a lot of locals drive Corvettes, so you're gonna see them everywhere it, on a Tuesday at lunch, driving up the road. Like people own them here, there's Corvette enthusiasts. It's a fun thing to see if you're into cars and classic cars and hot rods and Corvettes. All right, let's get right into it. Some of the cons. Well, this is happening everywhere, but the cost of new construction here is super high. I'd like to say that this area in Kentucky is one of the lower cost of living type areas. Well, consider, I mean, when you're comparing it to California, of course, yes, it is. Um, but pretty much all over the South, you're going to find the rising cost of everything and home prices going up consistently. I mean, over the long term. Of course, they fluctuate a little bit. And yes, we are seeing a little bit of a correction. But I don't think it's going anywhere back to where it was five years ago. It just is what it is. Another con to all this new construction. 
I mean, I love that we're building up the area, don't get me wrong, and these homes are beautiful, and these builders are great, but what I'm finding with a lot of new developments lately is, these developers knock out every tree in the state, and does that not drive you crazy? I'm like, we love the trees and the foliage and the, you know, neighborhoods that just make you feel like, I don't know, it's full of other things than just living in a box on a piece of ground. Like, I don't know why they take out everything. That's a huge con for me, and I'm not gonna lie. I don't like it, but here I am. Gonna probably live in one soon. It just is what it is, and if you wanna be near town in a newer subdivision, I mean, most likely you're gonna be in one where they've knocked out every tree, and you're gonna have to plant your own. I don't know why they do that. I don't, I don't wanna sound like I'm complaining, but it's annoying. So a big con to living in Bowling Green is traffic. Traffic gets really crazy around here. I, I'm not going to compare it to like a city like Atlanta. I mean, that's just a whole nother uh, level of congestion. <laughs> Scottsville Road in particular and Campbell Road and Nashville Road, those areas are so congested most of the day. Um, you've really got to learn the times around here when traffic is better. Definitely in the mornings before like 10 a.m., 11 a.m., um, but anytime after that, I mean, you're going to sit at the same traffic light probably two to three times. It, it's frustrating. And again, it just depends on the day. After school, I think, is the worst. Um, that two o'clock to like five o'clock hour is terrible. But then after like 6.30, 7, it clears up a little better and you can kind of maneuver around. On Friday night and Saturday night, I mean, just forget about it. That's where all the restaurants are. Give yourself an extra 30 minutes to go five miles. It's just the way it is. Another con is, now I can't, I just came from the state of Idaho where outdoor life is thriving. It's all there is to do there. Skiing, snowmobiling, biking, hiking, whatever. Here in Kentucky, um, I just, I think we do have a lot of outdoor lifestyle opportunities. But I think that the majority of the population maybe doesn't take full advantage of the things that are here as often as we could. And maybe our communities and um, towns and cities maybe could do a better job of giving us more opportunity for that. I know the weather plays a big part in that. So from November to April, it can just be really drizzly, rainy, gray, cold, chill in your bones type weather and people just don't tend to go outside during those times unless you're like seriously committed, you're a you know, faithful runner or biker and there are those people that do that. But here in Bowling Green, there are uh, greenways, which are like walkways, bikeways around town in all the little parks. But the, the con to it is they don't connect. And I wish they did because I wish we had like a big, like what some other cities call green belt or a, a belt, a loop of some kind. That would be awesome. What I see that we're lacking here is like bike shops and things like that where you could rent a bike or an e-bike. Um, there's lots of other towns and cities that offer these kind of things and Bowling Green just isn't one of them. You can find a couple bike shops here where you can purchase a bike or an e-bike, um, but really no place to rent them and like hop on a belt somewhere and, and do those things. To me, that's a big con. I would love to be able to do that more often, and I think it's just going to be one of those things where I have to invest in my own bike and find my paths that I like best that give me, you know, I guess the most bang for your buck. When you get on a path, you don't want to go a mile and have to come right back. You want to keep going, right? So there are a few around here. Um, you just have to find them, talk to the bike shops. They know where they're at. Um, but there's just nothing that really connects and goes around the city. That would be awesome. So I think the last con for today is that we live in an area where we get a lot of rain. I already talked about the weather. And it is an area that could be prone to tornadoes. It's not often, but it can happen and does happen. Matter of fact, last year, if you have watched any kind of news and are familiar with what went on in Kentucky, this area in southern Kentucky got hit pretty bad. Uh, last December 2021. There's still some recovery being done here. And tornadoes are a real thing here. And in Bowling Green, there are a lot of homes that don't have basements. I mean, there are some, so you can find some homes with basements. But there are options. You can purchase one of those, like, enclosed shelter units that fit inside your garage, those kind of things. I mean, if you're worried about those things. I personally wouldn't choose a home just based on my fear of tornadoes. It 
doesn't happen here that often, but it can and does. Unexpected, of course, and um, if that's something you're concerned about, um, maybe just definitely try to find a home with a basement or near a public tornado shelter area. That's pretty much it, guys. Bowling Green is a very, very nice area to live, and if you're considering coming to Kentucky and you need some help finding a home, please don't hesitate to reach out. Our information is in the link below, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you all again soon.